let's dive right in. This is another free asset for cubic perovskite crystal lattices. Now, specifically, this one is based around the methyl ammonium lead iodide lattice in the cubic form. And what that means is that the ratio of the atoms that you can see, and we'll hit Z and come into material preview. So these are the default materials I've set up. But the ratio of the atoms at the A, B, and X site, respectively, are the ratios of a methyl ammonium ion, iodine ion, and lead 2 plus ion. Now, those are all defined based on particle systems. The actual atoms themselves that are used for the particles are all exactly the same size. So if we were to come to the scale, you would see each one has the same dimensions. But the particle systems that govern each one choose the respective size. Let's talk about the actual model. You can see we have this object, the perovskite octahedra, and underneath it, parented, is the cubic positions. What that essentially means is that if I grab the octahedra and move it around or scale it, then the cubic positions will move with it. Similarly, when we come to the modifiers, you can see that we've got quite a degree of modularity here with arrays for the X, Y, and Z axes, as well as two particle systems for the X site and B site atoms in the octahedra. And similarly, in the actual cubic positions, we have the same arrays, but then also a particle system for the A site atoms. Now, this is set up so that the count here is going to drive the count here for all of the respective arrays. What that means is that I can simply use this toggle for the octahedra and increase the count as I please for any of the three dimensions and the other one will update accordingly. One thing that you'll maybe have noticed here is that when I add too many, I'm starting to lose positions of atoms. So this one doesn't have a B site, this one doesn't have a B site, and I'm definitely missing some blue atoms here. That is because by default, the Particle systems are all set up for exactly the number of atoms that you would need for just this lattice with these dimensions. If you're going to increase the size of the lattice, you'll simply have to increase the number of particles for the X, B, and A site particle systems. However, if you're going to shrink this down, then you shouldn't have any problems and it will work as desired. So you can see I can freely shrink this, the whole lattice is going to change. Let's say I want to change it in the Y axis as well, make it a little bit shorter, and I'll shave one off the Z as well. Now, because this is so modular, you also have control over whether or not you want to visualize all of the atoms. Let's say I just want the octahedra and not the actual X site atoms. I can hide those in the viewport and also in the final renders if this is something more akin to the look I'm after. I can also hide the B site atoms if that's something I want to do and just have something simpler like this. As for the materials, as always, they're very carefully labeled. So there's perovskite glass material. This is set up to work out of the box with Eevee. So I do have the screen space reflections and refraction enabled, and all of the materials are similar, similarly enabled. Reviewing the other materials, you can see that for each of the respective atoms, we have very careful labeling of A site atom for the material. You can see preview there, and then surface down here. B site similarly, and X site as well. And these can be any shader that you want. I leave that customization up to the end user. If we look at this in rendered mode, you can see, again, this is very, very simple, very stripped down. And for each of the actual atoms, as the lattice grows bigger, you can see that there is a subdivision surface of two applied to the renders, one in the viewport, but I hide it in the viewport for each of the atoms just so that it doesn't take extra computational power to render a significantly larger lattice if that is something that you need to do for any given figure. To obviously get a little bit of better shading and something reflective of what you see in material preview in your final render, you can do all kinds of setup with HDRIs. I'll link a video in the description for how I do that for my scenes personally. Other than that, again, this is very simply a nice modular procedural-ish lattice that you can control and use for your renders of perovskite materials, which are obviously widely used in solar cells and increasingly in other applications such as sensors, light emitting diodes, x-ray detection, all kinds of things. Very, very common in a lot of material science journals and hopefully of great use to you. The link for the file on Gumroad, which is free, of course, will be in the description, as well as a link to the original tutorial if you want a better sense of how this was actually made and a little bit more personal control over some of the details of it. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. Please let other people know about these free assets so that they can be made use of. And until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.